the first paper uh, will be uh, from Francesco uh, from the University of uh, uh, Stars Clyde. And, um, and he'll talk about, how, you know, how to build a podcast collection with user interactions. And Francesco, I think you can take over and share slides from your end. Yeah, cheers. I'll try to share my screen here. Um, hopefully it doesn't fail on me again. Okay. Should be able to see my screen now? Yeah. Perfect. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Francesco Meggetto. I am a PhD candidate at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, UK. It's uh, in uh, sort of cloudy Scotland right now. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to present our position paper, uh, which is titled On Building a Podcast Collection with User Interactions. This work has been done at the New Research Lab in collaboration with the, also my supervisor, Dr. Yashar Moshvagi, and Dr. Rosie Jones. Uh, we, uh, well, uh, no presentation is, is needed. Uh, she was the keynote, but uh, Director of Research in Language Technologies at Spotify in Boston, the US. So, there you go. Okay, so in this presentation, I'm going first to give a very brief introduction to podcasts and then briefly discuss why they are a very complex domain. Then I will move on to the Spotify podcast dataset and its main limitation, which is the lack of user behavior, user interactions. Then I will move on to our proposal, which is to kind of create a new collection with user interactions, an augmentation of the existing data set. And then I'm going to discuss various experimental approaches that uh, we have identified. And I will conclude with uh, some final conclusions and some final remarks on a community effort to make this work possible. So podcasts have actually been ar around for quite some time, uh, at least from the early 2000s with the iPod. But only recent years, they have sort of exploded in popularity. Uh, as an example, as of 2021, this year, there are over 1 million active podcasts and over 30 million episodes in more than 100 languages. Uh, in the US, 75% uh, of the population is familiar with the term podcast, uh, 55 are listened to at least one, and 37 are monthly listeners. Uh, what this means is that all in all, they are now an essential part of listening habits, together with uh, uh, for example, music, a uh, more well-established domain, and also more research. Uh, however, they are a uh, quite complex domain. Um, podcasts are spoken audio-only documents, but they are substantially different from other spoken document corpora that were analyzed in the past. Uh, for example, music or even movies or news, etc. For example, episodes in podcasts are on average between half an hour and one hour long, and this places them in between what we can find in music and what we can find in movies or TV series. Uh, podcasts have also a wide range of style, format, language variety, and variations that make their analysis very, very challenging. Uh, for example, it was mentioned before, uh, some episodes may have one speaker, some episodes may have two speakers, or even three speakers that may speak simultaneously. And also another example is that category labels that are given by podcast creators are oftentimes unreliable. And this makes, for example, search quite uh, a more complicated task than what it already, it already is. And so all of these challenges make their analysis complex and therefore it is a very complex, but also under research domain. Uh, to facilitate research, in 2020, Spotify released the Spotify podcast data set. Uh, Rosie raised the, already mentioned, uh, this data set, but uh, very briefly, it is a very large corpus of podcast episodes, uh, 100,000 of them, roughly, a bit more. Um, and it, uh, this is about two terabytes of data. Uh, each episode includes an audio file, uh, that's why it's very large, automatically transcribed text, which is done by the Google APIs, and uh, associated metadata. Uh, the data set was also released in conjunction with a track podcast track uh, with two shared tasks that were set, uh, segment retrieval and episode summarization. Uh, it is a great and amazing opportunity to advance the field, but what we find is that uh, its main limitation is that it lacks of user contextual information and, and also their interaction history with the system, and in this case, Spotify. And this makes its applicability to certain tasks, for example, recommendation or user behavior analysis, uh, difficult or even impractical, as is the case of user behavior analysis. So what we propose is then to build a complementary data set of podcast listening sessions. 
the aim of this uh, project, of this proposal, of this idea, is to build and then release a new general purpose collection for academic research. Uh, this is to be thought of not as a data set for single studies, but rather for the entire community to progress the field in the years to come. It can also be thought of as an augmentation of the existing Spotify podcast data set by including these user interactions data, um, as so as to form these listening sessions. An example of a listening session could be, you know, we have user ID, we have timestamps, we have listening time, and then some user behavior, for example, the play, stop, subscribe, pause, skip forward, skip backwards, etc. Uh, if this project is successful, it will open up a wide range of research opportunities uh, in the communities, including analysis on, on, but it's not only limited to information needs, analysis on characteristics and behavior of users, episode relevance, and uh, as well as recommendation and personalization and search. So to do so, we have identified the three uh, approaches that I'm going to uh, briefly introduce here. Uh, but we are open for discussion and also on finding the best approach to make this work possible. The first approach uh, that we propose is user simulation. Uh, this idea came from the recent work of Young and colleagues in 2019 uh, at Wisdom, uh, where they basically showed that podcast representation can be enriched by modally non-textual characteristics. And their model uh, adversarial learning model is able to predict seriousness, energy, and popularity. And, and so what we propose is a user simulation that is driven by the most recent findings in users' listening patterns and consumption. However, what we realize is that this approach is not a momentarily straightforward or even unbiased process. Uh, this is because, uh, put in, sim in simple terms, there is a scarcity of research at the moment in users modeling for podcast. And so this approach is rather difficult. Therefore, what we propose instead is to perform a laboratory-based user study. Uh, this study, uh, the aim of this study is to collect user interactions from real participants. Uh, so this is a study that will be done in a controlled environment. And so what we're able to do is that we are able to actually exploit uh, real users' behavior because we, are, we have real participants and not artificial behavior. Uh, this also gives us high experimental control so that uh, we can test various hypotheses that we may have. However, uh, the problem with that is that it has high time requirements, meaning that uh, a data set may take some time to be produced, to be generated. And also it is a small scale study, uh, given the low number of participants that uh, we can recruit. And, uh, and what, what this means is that it is in contrast, in opposition to our stated goal of building a general purpose collection for the community. Therefore, what we propose is that our third approach, which is crowdsourcing based. Uh, the aim of this study is uh, very similar to the one I, I just mentioned, the laboratory based one, uh, but now participants can now are recruited in a different way, uh, either by crowdsourcing, for example, Amazon Mechanical Turk, or from selected academic communities such as this one here, Podrex, SIGAYAR, uh, Rexis, et cetera. In, in the first case, however, we believe it is unfeasible for two reasons. Uh, the first one is the associated cost. It, it can become really, really exp expensive. Uh, but secondly, the results that we may get might be unreliable and inaccurate. This is because we ask Turkers to just perform the task and so what this means is that this may lead to an untruthful reflection of users' information needs. So what we believe to be the, the sort of best approach is uh, to recruit from the academic communities. But to do so, we need a community effort from all of you. In terms of the design of the experiment, um, participants will be asked to interact with an ad hoc system uh, a website and a mobile application uh, with basic functionalities and, and also a basic facade that resemble and are very similar to existing modern screening platforms. Uh, this is done to, to allow for uh, high familiarity with the system of the, by the users. We identified two possible approaches on the how participants can navigate through the system, uh, either by search or by recommendation. 
so in the in the first case, in the first scenario in search, uh, users, the participants can freely search and listen to episodes they deem relevant or interesting. And this is done by user-defined search queries. And this means that users have control over the content that we'd like to stream. So they can freely search on the list of available episodes and shows. In the second case, the recommendation, uh, we, we need a built-in system, a built-in recommender system that recommends a list of episodes from which then the users can choose from. However, this adds extra challenges to the already many of uh, building this collection. And also it, it requires explicit collection of users' interests. Uh, however, this can be done uh, by a questionnaire prior to the experiment start. Uh, now, moving on to the type of data that we may want to collect, uh, we have, of course, the explicit and then the implicit type of feedback. For the explicit one, uh, we identified two approaches on how to collect such feedback. And this is done by uh, item relevance judgment. So the first case is single item judgment, and the second is multi-item judgment. Uh, in the first one, after each listening, uh, the user is asked to rate the content, is asked by the system to rate the content on a scale one to five. So from very bad to very good. And, and optionally, maybe also say why, you know, on a text box or something like that. Uh, what this does is that it will generate a sort of collection that would be similar to, uh, to for example, movie lens uh, or, or similar data sets. In the second case, multi-item judgment, uh, now, after listening to two or more episodes, the user is asked to rank them in order of preference. And so depending on, on, on which approach that we take, uh, the data set that will be generated will be substantially different. Lastly, in terms of the implicit type of feedback, uh, actually the types are many. There are many types of interactions that we may want to collect. And so a selection of the best set is left for this discussion from also what the community thinks uh, we really need. Uh, however, some, some examples could be, you know, the listening time, the dwell time, consumption level, start and time. And then there is also, you know, a subscribe, uh, play, stop, pause, skip forward, skip backwards, etc. So in conclusion, uh, our goal, uh, that is also a community goal, is to generate a general purpose data set of podcast listening sessions. Again, this is, as I said before, a, this is to be thought of as not a data set for a single study or two studies, but rather for the entire community to take advantage of. It is without any doubt, uh, very ambitious, uh, but without, and without any doubt, there are lots of challenges involved. Uh, some examples on some factors that we may want to consider uh, if, when we design the experiment are the total number of episodes, the 100K, and also the length in nature. Uh, in the first case, uh, the number of episodes, we may want to reduce the number of available episodes by sampling, by creating a sub-collection. Uh, however, it is very important to keep in mind, if you do so, that there are major differences across episodes in terms of uh, length or topic, style, uh, et cetera. And so it is crucial when you design that sampling strategy to account for all of these. And most importantly, to not introduce various biases into the process, for example, the popularity bias. Uh, in the second factor, in the second case, the length in nature, uh, we believe that maybe a better approach would be to, to only retrieve small and relevant sections, and those, only those should be available for listening uh, by the participants. This is done to keep a high level of user engagement uh, by, the, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the participants. Otherwise, it becomes too lengthy of a process. All in all, however, uh, we call for a community effort to make this work possible. Uh, so if you have any other suggestions or if you have uh, other ideas in mind, please feel free to reach out. So I hope I was on time. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Again, if you have any questions or suggestions or if you're open for a collaboration, uh, please feel free to reach out via email at uh, my email address, francesco.megetto at strapacuk. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, I'm here. Great. Uh, uh, 
Thanks, Francisco. And and uh, any questions from the audience? I hear something. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, like uh, uh, you were talking about an open data set. So could we uh, like aggregate the existing data sets into a bigger data set uh, for users to analyze from? Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that, that's many, that's basically our idea to augment the existing data set uh, released by Spotify last year. And uh, this is basically, in simple words, adding user interactions data in there. Uh, uh, I was talking about aggregating various uh, podcast data set, aggregating. Aggregating various data sets. Yes, like a list of uh, podcasts into one. I'm not sure I fully get your question. Sorry. So like uh, music videos uh, also are released ah. on okay. YouTube as well as on Spotify. But uh, on YouTube, I think there are more music videos than on Spotify because on YouTube there are uh, like people release it more because it's the biggest platform. So like uh, mm -hmm. aggregating means like combining from various like Spotify data set and any other data set uh, that is publicly available. Right, yeah. So um, so uh, our aim here is, uh, I believe just for, just for podcasts, but it can also be considered to be for other, um, other mediums. But for example, for music, there, there is already a data set by Spotify, the music streaming sessions, where they basically have um, sort of these defined listening sessions with a, user, with a user behavior on how people, for example, skip the content, et cetera. Uh, so we, we try to make this work only related to podcasts to make it uh, only, uh, you know, the research only for podcast related, but it can also be, you know, uh, absolutely, you can include other various sources. And also the podcasts that are available in the data <laughs> in the data set, I, I believe, are podcasts from yes, from Spotify, but are available everywhere as well. At least some of them, and unless they are Spotify, uh, you know, uh, only 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 for Spotify. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, hi, Francesco. Um, no. Thanks for the talk. Um, I did have a question. You're talking about a community effort among, um, you sort of mixed the idea of uh, uh, Amazon Turk and sort of a wide open audience for this. Uh, and you're looking, it sounds more toward the, the researcher audience to try to collect data from. And I'm just wondering how, you know, we're not really a, a neutral audience uh, who, you know, those of us who already study podcasts and are, and are looking at this, we may have varied interests across the, the spectrum, but I, I kind of imagine that our listening habits uh, and preferences are not really indicative of the wider audience. Do you think, do you think there's going to be much problem there? Yes, uh, th thank you. Thank you for your question. That's a very good point, actually. Uh, so yes, uh, it might introduce some problems because, you know, as you just said, uh, it's it just a, a sort of a small sample of population. You can call it that way, I guess. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, so the, the main problem with the crowdsourcing based idea is that you, you just uh, sort of ask random strangers to, to perform a task and then maybe they don't do it properly, you know. So that's why we, we don't want that approach. We want something that is actually a true reflection of users' behavior, of real users. So it might be that we recruit from uh, these selected communities of researchers, but also from other, maybe local communities are around, you know, different cities. For example, here I'm in Glasgow, you know, some, some from Glasgow, some from London, some in the US, et cetera. But the, the main point is that we, we want to uh, really get real users' behavior and not just uh, something fake, you know what I mean? I hope that answers the question. But it, it, yeah, it's a very great, great question. Thank you for, thank you for that.